Right. Today, our viewer has asked, I am concerned about the effect of our meat-based diet on the future of our planet. What are the best sources of information on this subject? Oh my, such an important question, perhaps the most important question of all. Well, those people who've been following my work for years know that I'm a passionate environmentalist. I love this planet dearly and I'm very distressed as to what is happening to it and what we are doing to it largely as a result of our meat-based diet. And uh, if you'll permit me to uh, make some very vivid images appear here, uh, let me show you some pictures that uh, communicate my concern. All right. So uh, here is the sum of my concerns encapsulated in these images. Here you see these beautiful children uh, who should have a long, healthy life ahead of them. Uh, but whether they know it or not, they are on a planet uh, that is slowly but steadily warming, uh, having all sorts of uh, adverse effects upon the planet itself and ultimately on these children's future. Uh, we're all aware as the earth is getting warmer, uh, the uh, polar ice caps are melting, sea levels are rising, forests are disappearing. Uh, and it turns out that we raise and slaughter every year on this planet 80 billion living creatures, every one of them breathing out carbon dioxide, most of them belching out methane. They're eating grains raised with ammonia fertilizers that put nitrous oxide into the air. These are major contributors to the warming of the planet. And as it says in the bottom right here, uh, though you know, we're all focused on optimal function of our human body, but it doesn't matter what your cholesterol level is. If we don't have a livable planet uh, to live on, uh, then none of this makes any difference. And at the rate we are going, uh, this wonderful ecosystem that supports everything that we are and do and eat uh, is gonna be taken away from us. It's already being taken away from these uh, magnificent polar bears that are on this melting iceberg uh, because of our voracious appetite for animal flesh. Uh, those of you uh, are probably well familiar with this, but it turns out that large scale industrial animal agriculture is the driving force of every single environmental disaster that we face. Uh, deforestation, that's why they're cutting down the forest to make grazing land and crop land for, uh, for animal uh, flesh to be grown, especially in the Amazon, they're uh, growing either beef or the soybeans to feed the beef. Soil erosion, mo most of the soils, and especially in the American Midwest, uh, after every rainstorm pour into the rivers, they are eroding off fields of corn and soybeans and alfalfa destined for the gullets of animals to turn into animal flesh. Water depletion in the United States, most water goes not to cities, but to irrigate corn, soybeans and alfalfa. Most water is polluted by animal manure, pesticides and herbicides coming off farmers fields, growing animal fodder. Uh, most species are being driven to extinction because we are taking their land and their forests and turning it into uh, land to grow animal flesh. As I mentioned, um, greenhouse gases are largely driven by animal agriculture and all the fossil fuels that are burned to run the tractors and the irrigation pumps and the trucks and the slaughterhouses and the restaurants and the refrigerators and the freezers that keep meat cold. Meat eating has its tentacles into the majority of our environmental disasters. You can't separate out, well, there's transportation and then there's meat eating. Uh, the, the, so much of the transportation is burning gasoline uh, to, in order to produce and consume meat. It's, uh, it's really uh, the unifying force that's, uh, that's driving the destruction of our world and our children's world. <clears throat> And it's people, well, we'll, we'll, we'll just eat fish. Um, again, uh, uh, we've used fishing up. Humans catch and kill one to three trillion living animals every year. For every piece of wild caught fish on the plate, there's dozens of 
of whales and dolphins and turtles and sharks and seabirds drown in fishing nets and on long lines. Uh, we, we, we're strip mining the oceans, we're clear cutting the oceans. And I urge you to uh, see on Netflix this powerful film called Sea Spiracy. It's kind of a sister film to Cowspiracy by the same producers. And it will make it really clear why, well, we'll just eat fish is not a viable option. So we are really running out of time. We're certainly running out of land and, uh, and uh, water and, and time. So how do you educate? The question is where to go get information. Well, here's three sites that you really, I urge you uh, to investigate the sites and what they contain. It will really uh, open your eyes to these realities and what you can do about it. It's not to reduce you to hopelessness, it's to inspire you uh, because there's so much we can do. First of all, go to the website of Dr. Richard Oppenlander called Comfortably Unaware. And it's comfortablyunaware.com. See the videos there, read his wonderful book of the same title, Comfortably Unaware, which is right where the meat and dairy industries want us. You know, keep eating those burgers. Don't worry about what it's doing to the planet. Um, and uh, educate yourself at Dr. Oppenlander's website, Read Comfortably Unaware. Uh, we have use meat eating up. The time to eat animals is past, okay? And as Dr. Oplander makes a point, all other plans uh, to mitigate climate change are doomed to fail, and so are we, if they don't include the cessation of producing and eating animals as we have been doing. We've used it up. It is killing us at this point. It's turned on us. No matter what the mighty hunter did throughout history, it, time to turn the page on that. We are being, being given the message, human beings, if you want to thrive as individuals, adopt a whole food plant-based diet. And if you want to survive as a species, uh, adopt a whole food plant-based diet. It's time to evolve to become homo plant eater. The second website you should go to is that of Dr. Silas Rao, the climate healers. They go to climatehealers.org and Read what you can do, educate yourself and understand the importance of if we stop eating animals, that will free up so much land that the forests will come back. And as the trees grow, they take carbon dioxide out of the air. The soils will stabilize, the rivers will run pure again. The animals will, will come back. Uh, we'll make peace with nature and there will be enough food to feed everyone. We'll need so much less land to grow our food uh, with, a, uh, with a planet devoted to uh, growing food for people directly rather than to shovel down the gullets of animals and, uh, uh, and then eat the animals. So uh, go to climatehealers.org and educate yourself. <clears throat> and finally, I think the most powerful website of all, the one that really snaps us into realities is that of uh, uh, Jim Hicks. Uh, what, a, what a devoted uh, man uh, he, he is and so concerned about the big picture uh, and uh, his full name is J. Morris Hicks. Uh, and if you do a search call on the Four Leaf Program, please do this. It will take you to his website, and, and he's under his signature in his email. Uh, he has this very tough way, running out of time to save our species. That is Jim's message. We are running out of time. And, uh, but there are things we could do. We can have to re-engineer how we create our food, but how our, we, we move around this planet, how we do so much. And he's got it all covered in this wonderful four-leaf program. So please uh, educate yourself by uh, going to his website. Just do a Google search on Four Leaf Program. It'll take you to his website. Read his short little book, Healthy Eating, Healthy World. It's a quick little, you can read it in just a couple hours. Uh, and you will have the information you need to, to, when you turn on the evening news and you hear what is happening or isn't happening to the planet, you'll know the connection. Uh, and it will fortify you uh, to become a truly healthy eater for not only your own body, but for the planet itself. 
so it's, it's wonderful that I get a chance to talk to you about uh, vitamins and minerals and absorption and all those wonderful personal issues. But my biggest planet, uh, my biggest patient is planet Earth. And uh, we all have a great stake in, in its thriving and its survival. Uh, so educate yourselves at these websites and uh, you can help make a better world. And Because we owe the kids, we owe the animals, we owe the future, and we do it by living responsibly. So these websites will uh, help you learn how to do it. Hi everyone, Dr. Michael Clapper here announcing our new format for our Q&A with Dr. K. Annie Hagen will be asking me one question that's been sent in by our viewers. So if you want to see if your question is getting answered, do join us for our Q&A with Dr. K right here. Hope to see you then.